Hey Lake Point Youth, welcome back to another week of Youth Online. If you're watching for the first time, my name's Pastor Ethan, and we're so excited you've joined us today. Let me tell you what you can expect over the next 30 minutes. We're gonna have some interactive chats. If you're watching live, make sure you chime in on the conversation. We're gonna watch a brand new episode from The Greg and Riley Show, and then we're gonna get into a brand new teaching series. But before we get into the nitty gritty of Youth Online, we've been talking about a graduation celebration for our grade 8s and 12s. So next Friday, June 26th at 8 p.m., we're gonna have something special for our graduates here on YouTube. We're calling it Starting Now. As you start this new season of your life, whether you're heading into grade nine this fall, heading into the workplace, or you've been accepted to college or university, it's an incredible season to start fresh. Maybe this season is one where you want to start a new hobby, a new skill, a new habit. Maybe you're looking to reinvent yourself in a healthy way or start a new school year with new friends. Whatever that looks like for you, we want to send you off with a celebration. So mark your calendars, write a reminder, subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you'll get notified when we go live. Tattoo the date on your arm, carve it into your scooter, do whatever you gotta do to join us Friday, June 26th at eight. And speaking of scooters, I'm about to hit play on an epic video by some friends of ours who at one time in their life probably rode a scooter. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's tune in to The Greg and Riley Show. Hello. Hello. And welcome to The Greg and Riley Show. Today, Episode five. Baby, baby episode. Baby edition. Here's our babies. This Say one's hello. mine. This one's mine. You can tell by the way it is. This one's mine. Hey. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> okay. First part, taste testing. Thank you. La, 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 la. Okay. Hey. So, so now we're gonna do the taste test portion with just us. And babies. Babies can't eat yet because- Keep my baby side like this because she will be mad. My baby is not a baby, so- If I turn do her. whatever. This is- Okay, so. Okay. Let's keep these kind of- Let's start with something good. This could be good. Apples, apple, sweet potato, and carrot. Is that this one? Ooh. Nope, this one's warm. It's this one. It's gotta be that one. Come Apple, here, honey. sweet potato, and carrot. Looks like that. The list. I'm expecting it's gonna be decent. Pretty good. All right, here we go. The smell is actually quite nice. I got a big old spoonful. I do like applesauce. So this is essentially applesauce. I could applesauce. just eat this. Yeah, I have no problem eating that. Applesauce with carrot. For is what I'm getting. And I'll, that's really it for me. It tastes pretty good. Four yeah, stars. I could do that all day. This is a, our next one. Wholesome four, coconut kiwi, and mangosteen with quinoa. Best, it says best warmed. It's, no, no, no. Yeah, no, no, that's warm. this one, brother. Oh, okay. So that is that one? Yeah. Okay. This well. is coconut. Yeah, coconut kiwi looks like donkey poop, but that's fine. One of these days we'll be eating this food, honey. I'm gonna take a little bit less of this one. <laughs> Same. Here we go. Mmm. But then, not bad. Kiwi. Tastes like bananas. Yeah. But kiwi. once again, not bad. I'd, I'd eat it. And it's in a little slurp bottle, so I would slurp that all day. I'll take this bad boy to work with you. Let's say I'm Sam Weeby. And I'm working at Nature Fresh. Sam, get one of these, buddy. I've been working so hard chopping those weeds. All you gotta do, take this bad boy, crank it open. Slurp her back. You want it? There you go. Give her a slurp. Oh, that worked better than I thought. You slurp it or you gotta squeeze it? All I had to do was suck. Yeah. I guess it's probably imitates the baby in a bottle. <laughs> you do that? Gotta be the same. No, you don't. 
No, it has to be the same. <laughs> okay, we're getting into the grosser ones. Let's start with this one. We're looking at some autumn pumpkin pear and beef stew. Mm. Looks like this. And this one says... Organic feet. It's all organic, by the way. This one says, tastes yummy, warmed. So, this so, is warmed. So we warmed it. Here we go. Did you warm? Here we go. I'm going to just get a little bit on this one. Mm. Ugh, I don't want that one. Ooh. This tastes like... Pumpkin. I don't even like pumpkin. That's why. Ugh. Tastes like squash. I was hoping I'd get a lot of beef, but I, I didn't get no beef. I think the beef just comes through in the grimy texture. I'm looking forward to this, and I'm not. This <laughs> is the veggie beef bolognese and pasta stars. See? Which look at the pasta. Look at the pasta stars. It's kind of like corn. It looks like corn. Looks disgusting. Let's get in. Here we go. It's hard to scoop. Woo! She's going crazy. <laughs> we have to do this so fast before our babies lose their minds. Here we go. Starting to go. Okay. This one's for you. You want to smell? You can't eat it. You're not old enough. Ah. <laughs> She's spitting up all over my shirt. <laughs> Again? You know what? I hate it. I like that one more than the other one. I would say that's like a two. I'd eat this one more than the other one. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I, I don't, don't like that at all. That I don't mind. The veggie beef bolognese pasta sauce. Pasta stars is a good one. So, again, if you're in the baby section and you're like, I'm hungry, don't have a lot of money, I'm going to buy some food. That only costs me 94 cents. Buy this. Hook, hook me up, Ethan. Dude. 94 cents per package. Yeah. 128 mils is that Still one. Still looking for the, the check you've been promising us in the yeah. mail. Where's our coin? Dude, 128 milliliters will fill you up for a good meal. Look, look Say at this hello face. to baby. Look at that face. Say, Say hello, Ethan. I need some money so I can, <laughs> I can have some food. Hello. One of these days, I'm sure when they're older, this will be a cringe video for them. So now she's sucking my thumb. Ah, my daughter just has crazy old hair. <laughs> and my daughter just has none hair. Sticking up. Say Where's hello she? and goodbye. <laughs> we're gonna head upstairs and do baby challenges more. Right. <laughs> we have to now put. We're gonna put these on and put the babies inside of them. They're called belugas, I think. They look like this. It's a rat. Count us down. Beluga baby. Count us down to start. Uh, three, two, one, go. Her. You just have to hold here. See? She's in. Tight. <laughs> so perfect. <laughs> See? No hands. <laughs> See? She loves it. See whose baby cries first? Not mine. She loves it. Which means, and then to get more shade, you pull it over. Also, if you just go like this. Also, my thinking on that. And then you shove her in your pants to keep her tight. In your belt loop. One like, don't hit my baby. And then one like this. See? Boom. Go. This is for when it's hot outside. I think we did it. Those guys are the greatest humans ever. My ribs hurt from laughing every time I watch an episode. And speaking of ribs, have you ever broken one before? Let's talk about it in the chat.
Chatting with everyone live is probably one of my favorite parts of the week. So as we dive into our teaching series, keep those conversations going. All right, we're starting a brand new series today called The You Effect. If we really stop and pay attention, it's really easy to see how nearly everything and everyone around us has the potential to have an effect on us. And if that's true, then that means you have the potential to have an effect on the world around you too. From family to friends, from neighbors to random people at the grocery store, every single one of you has an effect on somebody around you. In other words, you have influence. And what you do with that influence matters. So in this series, we're gonna learn how to pay attention to our you effect. And we're gonna be encouraged to use our influence to improve and impact the lives of those around us. So let's check it out, week one of the U Effect. When you think about it, the English language can be quite strange. Why is phone spelled with a PH? I literally just don't get it. Why not start it with an F, okay? Why do we have three different spellings and meanings to the word two? Like, was that created just to confuse us when we're sending text messages? Why is it so hard to spell spaghetti? Somebody, no, I need somebody to tell me right now. I spell this word so badly, even my phone has no autocorrect ideas for me. It's basically shaming me, like, you know what? You're out on your own, Ben. And maybe the most annoying thing about the English language is that the word effect is spelled two different ways. On one hand, it starts with an A, and on the other hand, it starts with an E. You may not have known that, you may not care, but just stick with me here while I try to clear up the confusion. Effect, starting with an A, is usually a verb, and it means to change something. For example, their compliment really affected my day. Like I was in such a better mood after they said that. Now, effect with an E on the other hand is usually a noun and it's the result of change. Like when you hear about the side effects of medications, it's referring to the result of change that medication could cause in your body. Now, right now you're probably wondering why in the world we are taking grammar at church. Well, the point is that both of these words are similar and can be easy to get confused, but both of them are key to what we're talking about in this series because we're talking about the ways that we influence, impact, and change each other. And we're gonna to start today by talking about you. How do you affect or change something for the people around you? In other words, what's the result of that change? What's the you effect? Some of you may acknowledge that you affect and impact the people around you. Maybe you hold some type of leadership position, either at church or at school, or you have friends and you understand that hey, your opinion affects others. Whether it's about something serious like who your friends should date or something random like what Avenger you think is the best, Iron Man, of course, but you just know that your words have an effect on others. On the other hand, some of you may say, I don't affect, impact, or influence anyone. The me effect is currently at zero. Like the only person I have influence over is my family's dog. And my family's dog is not a person, okay? And even he ignores me sometimes. If that's you, it's normal. I've been there. And I think there are a few reasons why it's easy to feel this way. Sometimes you may doubt that you have influence because you think you have to be a better leader to have it. And if you don't see yourself as a leader, it's easy to believe that you have no influence. Or maybe you question your impact because you feel pretty clueless about life. And if you feel lost, how in the world could you possibly impact somebody else? Or maybe you doubt your ability to affect others because, man, you're kind of afraid of putting yourself out there. You're like, I'd rather just fade into the background because the idea of influencing others is pretty terrifying to me. Or maybe the idea of influencing and affecting others is something you've never even thought about one way or the other. You're like, this is the first time it crossed my mind. 
The fact of the matter is this, regardless of what you think about influence, you have it. You have influence because you have relationships, whether it's your family or friends or classmates or people in this student ministry, we all have some influence over the people we come in contact with every single day. Now, whether or not you're a good or bad influence is another story, but influence is yours, you have it. And here's the truth. No matter how big or small your circle of influence seems, you have more of it than you think, okay? You got that? Now, we're gonna look at someone who used what they had to affect others, even though they didn't have very much. It's recorded in one of the Gospels, which are the four books in the New Testament in the second half of the Bible, that tell us all about Jesus' life. And what we'll read today was recorded by John, who was one of Jesus' closest followers and students. In fact, when Jesus was on the cross, one of the last things Jesus did was ask John to care for his mother after he died. So we can read these words knowing that they were written by an eyewitness who was trusted by Jesus. They were close friends. Now, so I'm gonna set the scene. When Jesus traveled around in his three years of ministry, crowds almost always followed. And it could have been because they had heard about Jesus, they wanted healing for something, or maybe they were just curious about this guy, but whatever the reasons, Jesus had a lot of influence and people were always around him. This particular day was no different. It starts like this. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near when Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him. He said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him for he had already had in mind what he was going to do. So imagine the scene. A large crowd has gathered to see the great miracle worker, Jesus. And what does Jesus do? He asked one of his disciples, Philip, what he thought they should do. If I were Philip, I would have been like, aren't you the miracle guy? Like, isn't this more your arena than my arena? But instead, Philip responds this way. Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. In other words, you gotta be kidding me. If we're going to feed everyone, there better be someone with a lot of cash around to make that happen, which, Hey, that's a good point. I mean, can you imagine sending someone to McDonald's to order 5,000 Big Mac combos? It's crazy, right? Well, the story continues. Another one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? So apparently only one mom in the entire village packed a lunch for her son. And Andrew thought this was worth pointing out. I mean, it was something, right? Something is better than nothing. And that's when Jesus went to work. Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. Now, there are all kinds of questions that come up when I read this story. Like, was it buffet style? Where did the baskets come from? How exactly did he turn five loaves and two fish into enough food to feed everyone? But here's maybe the most important question we could ask. Who had the biggest impact in this passage? I mean, it's easy to see that Jesus had influence, okay? Lots of it. I mean, by the end of this account, a large crowd was calling him a prophet because of the miracle he had just performed. So yes, Jesus has a huge effect. And then there's the disciples. They were impactful just by being associated with Jesus. So they certainly had an effect as well. But the real superstar of the story may not be who you think. I think it was the boy with the lunch. And at first it seems like the total opposite. How could a kid with some bread and fish be influential? But the truth is it wasn't the amount of what he had that allowed him to make a difference. It was his willingness to use what he had that made him influential. And this would have been an even bigger deal in the context Jesus was living in, 
where children weren't valued at all. No one would have seen this boy as having influence, but that didn't stop him from stepping up. And it was his willingness to do that that ended up impacting thousands of people. Like, can you imagine how the conversation went with his mom when he got home that afternoon? Yeah, mom, there were thousands of people there and uh, they ate my lunch. Yeah, they picked me, I shared my lunchbox and everybody had more than enough. No one, not even his mom could have imagined things going that way, but they did. And thousands of years later, we're still telling his story. I bet this kid and everyone else around this kid never, ever, ever thought influence like this would be a part of his story. It didn't matter that he didn't take the stage. It didn't matter that he wasn't well known. He wasn't in a position of leadership. He wasn't a speaker or a preacher. He wasn't the captain of the team. He wasn't the head of his class. Jesus wasn't looking for any of that. The only thing that mattered was that this boy brought all that he had and it was enough. Because ultimately this was about the power of Jesus and what Jesus was capable of doing through someone who was willing to be used and to offer what they had. Now, when it comes to you and I affecting the world around us, it's all about us being willing to show up and offer what we have. But before that's possible, you have to recognize this. You have more of an effect than you think. You have more of an effect than you think. Imagine if the little boy listening to Jesus teach believed that he didn't have any potential for influence. If he would have said, you know what? I don't, I'm not offering much, so I'm just gonna keep it to myself there would be no story to tell. In the same way, when we feel like we have nothing to bring to the table, when we believe that we don't have the potential to affect anything, there are countless stories and opportunities we may be selling short as a result. The way we see influence needs to change. It's time we begin to realize that having an effect on others and having impact is really just being willing to do something. Do something with what you have, no matter how big or small what you have is. In other words, having an impact isn't about doing more, having more, or knowing more people. It's about offering what you already have to those around you. But how do we begin to understand the effect we have on others and what to do about it? Well, I think there are a few steps you and I can take. And first, it really starts by identifying the who. Who are the immediate people in front of you? that you have the potential to affect? Who are the people closest to you? Maybe it's your siblings, friend or your friends, a teammate or other people in your family. No matter who it is or how many people it is, it's keeping in mind that there are people around us that we are capable of affecting. And then identify the need. What is it that the people around you need? Is it encouragement? Is it time, quality time with them? Do they need someone to listen to them? Someone to help them with their homework? Identify what you have to offer what needs are you equipped to meet? Identify what you can do and then do it. When we shift our mindset from not having enough influence or ha not having enough effect, whether that's because we don't know enough people or feel like we have enough to offer, and we begin seeing that everyone has an effect, everyone has influence when they use what they have for the people around them, that's when things begin to change. We'll start to see how much more all of us are capable of. We're gonna feel more empowered. We're gonna behave in different ways. We're gonna look for more ways to affect the people around us. Now, before we head out, I want you to think about a person in your life who has affected you in a positive way. What was it about them that allowed them to have an impact on you and your life? How did their influence impact your life for the good? In the same way that others have had an effect on you, you have the same ability to have an effect on others. No matter how small or big your circle of influence seems, you have more of an effect than you think. You have more influence than you know. So the question to ask yourself isn't, do I have the ability to affect others? Instead, the question should be, how will I use the influence that I already have? And ultimately, God is the one who has the power to change people. All you have to do is show up and offer what you have and let him do the rest. You have influence. Even if you don't think you do, you do. You don't need to do more. You don't need to have more or know more people to have influence. You already have it. 
And when you begin to understand that it's something you already have, you can start to imagine what God can do with it. So who can you have influence with? What are some things that you have that could affect someone else in a positive way? What can you do to help? This reminds me of a message we heard at Rooted maybe a year or so ago. It was a message titled, Just a Stick. We talked about the story of Moses. And when he encountered God, Moses is asked what he had in his hand. And, and Moses responds, he says, well, it's my staff. It's, it, it's my shepherd's staff. It, it's a stick that, that helps me look after my father-in-law's sheep. But God saw more than just a stick. God saw it as something that could strike the sea and part water. He saw it as something that could turn into a snake and, and, and prove that he was all powerful. God saw it as something that could turn the river streams into blood. The story of Moses is, is such an, an epic story. But my point is this, we all have influence. We just need to recognize what's in our hand and allow God to use it. So what do you have? It can be used to, to have a positive effect on someone else. Maybe that's something you want to talk about this week in your Connect group. Thanks everyone for watching today. Have a great week in your online Connect groups, and we'll see you next time at Youth Online.